right, questions for Coach. We'll start here with Mike in the front. Mike Curtis, Dallas Morning News. Jason, what was your interpretation of the fast break with PJ that led to the block by Derek White there at the end? My interpretation, um, it looked like a foul, but it wasn't called, so it wasn't a foul. Steve here on the left. Uh, Jason, you, you called two timeouts on deep in the third quarter, about two minutes apart. Um, their lead had gone from two to six, and then it went from six to 12. Uh, what were you looking for coming out of that first timeout that might have made the second one not needed? Yeah, um, just trying to keep, you know, Boston's a team that can run off threes in a, in a hurry. So uh, just trying to uh, keep that from happening. Also looking at just trying to give my guys some rest um, because they're, they're fighting extremely hard. Uh, we're, we're playing uphill. And so uh, the lead went from 6 to 12. Um, but then uh, uh, we responded after that second timeout. Hey, Front row here on the left. Hey, Coach, Maria Turner here with D210 Sports. How much did free throws factor into tonight's loss? Big. You know, the, the small things, we, we don't, you know, we have to do the small things, and that's part of the game. You know, those are points that we left on the board, and we didn't shoot free throws well tonight, and we have to be better. Tim McMahon, ESPN. Uh, you know, Kyrie came out early, you know, looked like he was rolling. Why do you think his rhythm was disrupted and he wasn't able to be – is impactful offensively the, the rest of the game. Uh, he had great looks. He just didn't go down. That's just the game of basketball. Um, sometimes you make them, sometimes you don't. You, you can continue to keep playing. Uh, he had some good looks that just didn't go down for him tonight. Mike Leslie, WFA. Uh, Luca was in just a minute ago, said that his missed free throws and his turnovers cost you guys the game. I'm just wondering your perspective on the totality of his performance. Yeah, he was great. Um, no matter what he says, um, that's just who he is. He's a leader, um, and it's not, you know, all on him. It's a team. We win as a team, and we lose as a team. And so um, he put us in a position. Um, he was really good tonight, um, and unfortunately, we just couldn't, um, you know, get over the hump. I thought our defense was really, really good. We just got to take care of the ball. Just too many turnovers uh, that gave them points, and then also, um, you know, being able to, we got we to gotta score the ball. And uh, right now, we, we got to find someone to, to join Luca and Kai in that scoring category. Second row, Tim. Tim Cato, The Athletic. Jason, it seemed like, you know, Luca got Boston to blink a little bit. There was more help. They were leaving players open more often, like you said. Um, you know, there just needs to be more scoring or, or more shot making. What, what did you kind of see in the second half of the way that, that Boston defended you guys and, and Luca specifically? And uh, why you guys weren't able to to you know take advantage of that space? Yeah, I think um, you know Luca's a special player. He's one, if not the best player in the world, and he causes a problem. And uh, he's able to find guys um, again, creating open uh, opportunities, and uh, we just didn't take advantage of it. Um, and we'll go back and look and see uh, if we can get even better looks. But the looks that we got, you know, we just missed some open threes. It was good to see Exum. Uh, knock down an open three, and hopefully we can build on that. Second row on the right. Uh, Jason, Matt Votor, Mass Live. On Wednesday, you talked about the Shaq and Kobe teams and said you felt like your Nets teams weren't good enough. You mentioned the, the that Golden State Warrior team that, that beat both you guys and the Celtics. With your young guys, do you, you, do you have to kind of get them in the right headspace to not be concerned that they're not good enough af after two games, especially when Celtics didn't haven't shot all that well? Yeah, I think um, we do have a, a quite a few young players, and uh, and for them to you know have fun and enjoy this um, and learn from it, and that's what they're doing. Um, and we've counted on them all year, not um, just here in the finals, but throughout the season, uh, and also in the Western Conference Finals or uh, the playoffs with Oklahoma City or the Clippers. Um, and for them, it's just a matter of getting comfortable and, and going back home. Hopefully, that will help. Second row here on the left. DJ Siddiqui of Forbes, as you, look to t as you look to turn this series around, heading back to Dallas, what's the biggest message that you send to your team? Yeah, we just got to stay positive. Um, some of us have been in this situation before. And, uh, and so just take one possession at a time, and we got to focus on game three, and that's all. Last row on the right. Richard Moore in USA Today. 
Heading back to Dallas, making the Celtics play on the road. They haven't lost a game on the road yet this year. Are there certain adjustments you can make to make life a little tougher for them in Dallas? Yeah, they haven't lost a game since May something, right? So, uh, yeah, they're hot. They're not just on the road, but at home. So, um, we got to protect home, and that's it. Um, we got to find a way, continue again to build on our defense. Our defense put us in a position uh, to win uh, tonight. Unfortunately, our offense uh, didn't didn't uh, help us. And so, uh, again, Kai and Luca are going to get their looks. It's uh, we got to get someone else involved uh, of being able to knock down some shots, but. Um, defensively, uh, we can build on this and we can be better, but we got to take care of the ball. And if we can take care of the ball, hopefully that gives us more opportunities at scoring. Third row on the right. Daniel Bell, BSO. Coach, how do you find that balance between playing one-on-one -on -one and trying to get those other guys involved? Yeah, well, I think it's a matter of not just playing one-on-one, -on -one, but setting, um, setting it up so that they can get a live ball catch and be able to work. Um, we had a, there with Luca there for a minute. He was uh, playing, you know, below the defense, and we were able to get him on the on the box or at the uh, nail, and he took full advantage of that. Um, and so, uh, just being able to move the pieces around, and uh, and I thought we did that. Uh, we we got to take care of the ball. I've said this. Uh, I sound like I'm repeating myself, but if we can take care of the ball and not give them live ball turnovers where they're just laying the ball up or dunking it. It puts us in a better seat, and so we just got to take care of the ball. That's the next step in the series. Last, last question to the right. Uh, Coach Champ De Lunas from ABS CBN News Philippines. What can you build on going on to games three and four, like the positives that you could emphasize to your players to encourage them instead of being down? Yeah, we're not down. Uh, we're positive. This is a group that believes. Um, we didn't get an opportunity to, to get a split or win two here on the road. So now uh, Boston held serve. Now we got to go home and hold serve.